Get your sock. Carlos' stomach is aching. Why? What's wrong, Carlo? Mom, my stomach is upset. Oh. Why? What happened? Maybe you did not eat your merienda. I have eaten my merienda. Believe me. Maybe you eat your food very quick. And you don't do it very well because you are too excited to play. Have you biked it well before you swallowed it? Yes. Wait, how did you know all about that? I read from our book that digestion begins in our mouth. Oh, I don't believe you. Mouth is not a part of our digestive system. Mom, is mouth part of our digestive system? Do you want to know the answers to all of your questions? Okay, so come with me and let's watch a video and I will show you something. The mouth receives the food you eat. Inside the mouth are the tongue and teeth. Your teeth work together to break food into tiny pieces. The tongue moves the food so that the teeth can chew them well. Biting, cutting, and chewing the food are the first steps in digestion. Mechanical digestion causes a physical change in the food by breaking it into tiny pieces. As you chew the food, saliva mixes with it. It wets and softens the food so the tongue moves it about. The enzyme in it changes starch, the nutrient in the food, to sugar. This is chemical digestion because a substance changed to another substance. I think digestion takes place only in our stomach. It's only the first step in the digestion process. Let's watch for more. Chewed food is ready to be swallowed. The tongue then pushes it down to the throat. From the tongue, the food passes through a long tube called the esophagus. The walls of the esophagus are made up of muscles. These muscles move in a wave-like motion to squeeze the stomach. The muscular movement is known as peristalsis. Foods taken in stay in the stomach for a definite period of time, depending on their kind and amount. Foods that contain fats and proteins take a longer time to digest. The stomach has many small glands along its walls. These glands release enzymes, hydrochloric acid, and water which combine to form the gastric juice. Hydrochloric acid helps break down the connective tissues and cell membranes in food. Peristaltic movement of the muscles in the stomach mixes the food and digestive juices thoroughly and breaks the mixture down into the thick liquid called chyme. Let's find out how food is digested in the stomach through an activity. So in this experiment, we are going to use a clean jar with cover, a glass of water, pieces of apples, and pieces of biscuits. Let's do it this way. Pour the water in the clean jar, and then place the broken pieces of biscuits and apples into the jar. Next, we will cover the jar tightly and shake the jar. Observe what happens. Now, describe the movement of water as I shake the jar. The water was waving. Okay, so what happens to the pieces of apples and pieces of biscuits? The biscuit is still melted in the water while the apple slowly melted and mixed in the water. What muscle movement is similar to the shaking I have done? The muscular movement similar to what we have done is called peristalsis. Okay, so infer how digestion takes place in the stomach. The muscular movement and the mixture of juices in the stomach break the food into nutrients. That's how digestion works. 
Now, let's watch for more! The enzyme found in gastric juice breaks down the protein in the food. As peristalsis mixes the food, it also pushes the food towards the small intestine. But not all the food leaves the stomach at the same time. Carbohydrates and sugar go to the small intestine first. Proteins and fats follow later. That is the reason why when you eat rice and meat for breakfast, you don't feel hungry for several hours. But if you eat bread with jam, you feel hungry in just a short time. Because rice, which is rich in carbohydrates, is digested first, and meat, which has protein content, follows. Digestion takes place for a long period of hours to be absorbed by the body. Unlike if you eat bread, which is also rich in carbohydrates, and jam, which contains sugar, will be easily digested by our body. So, we got hungry in a short period of time. Even if we eat candy, we easily got hungry because it is rich in sugar and absorbed by our body. Now I know! Wow! It's not the end of the digestion process. Let's watch for more! The small intestine is a narrow coiled tube connected to the stomach. If stretched, it measures about 6 meters long. The food that reaches the small intestine still contains undigested nutrients such as carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. What helps digest these nutrients? Near the stomach are the liver and the pancreas. The liver produces bile which helps digest fats. The pancreas produces pancreatic juices that digest carbohydrates fats, and proteins. The digested food is then passed to the blood which carries it to the different parts of the body. This completes the digestion process. Not all food becomes completely digested. Where do they go? The large cold tube attached to the small intestine is the large intestine. It is only about 2 meters long, but it is twice as wide as small intestine. Undigested foods, including water, is then removed through the walls of the large intestine. Leaves the undigested food or solid waste mass. This waste collects at the end of the large intestine. The movement of the walls of the large intestine pushes the waste into the rectum and out of the body through the anus. This elimination of body waste is called defecation or bowel movement. The mouth, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, and large intestine are connected to one another and form the long cold tube called the alimentary canal. Now that we have learned the different parts and functions of the digestive system, we can say that mouth is the beginning of digestion. Very good! Now, what are the different parts of the digestive system? The different parts of the digestive system are mouth, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, and large intestine. Very well said. Do you have any questions? No, ma'am. That's all children, and I hope you have learned a lot from me today.